Okay, good morning. We have today a 57 plate Saab convertible 93. Um, this one's been sent to us. I've opened the bonnet and just had a quick look and it is a non-starter. He's had it in his garage and um, interesting. Somebody has been messing about putting wires through. There's a few bits of wires that they've had a go at trying to get through and it won't start. I've taken the fuse box lid off just to have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, a device. You can put your normal computer on these, but you can't beat Tech 2, which was the original Vauxhall Saab diagnostic kit. So I'm going to put that on, see what fault codes we've got, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. I'll just show you what it's actually not doing. So let me just grab the key. Okay, so key placed in the ignition, and ignition turns on. But when you turn the key, completely dead. Press the pedal, nothing. Um, this cover's been taken off just by the recovery people who've brought it in to take it out of gear. But we've got non-start situation. So it goes through a system saying check in. And it says stability control failure, contact service. So let's get tech two on and uh, see what we can see. But this sounds like an absolute pain, but we'll certainly have a look. Okay, this is Tech 2. Now this is the official Saab Vauxhall diagnostic kit from back in the day. Now we've had this years because we did a lot on these at one stage. Um, now you can see there, it says Tech 2 Saab. So what we do is we connect this multiplexer to it called the Candy. And that goes to your diagnostic connector down there. It's a bit dark in here, I'm afraid, but here we go. So if we go through, now the screens on these are notorious. They take a while to warm up. So what I'll do is I'll give it a few minutes to warm up the screen so you can actually see what it's saying. And then we'll, um, we'll see what the fault codes are. And it might point us in the right direction as to what's not going on. Okay, screen's warmed up now so we can see. So we go into diagnostics. This is a 57 plate, so we go to 2008. Dead critical on years, these. It's a 9.3 Sport. We go down till it says all, and then we do a global ECU scan. So there we go. So it should say turn ignition on. There we are. And it'll work through it and it'll come up with the fault codes in a minute and we can see exactly if there's any communication faults. These have problems with steering switches, ignition column switch, you know, the actual motor that uh, takes the lock off. Oh, there you are, straight away. We've got, I can't focus in, hold on. Let me just see if I can get a good picture of that for you. Hmm. There we go. See, it says ECM missing. So engine control module. So if that's missing, we know that it ain't gonna start because in the steering column here on one of these, there's, um, can't really see, hold on. You see that piece of kit there? You see that there? That is a column integration module and that handshakes when the key's putting the ignition down here, that handshakes with the engine ECU because the, um, the key data is stored in the engine ECU and the SIM on a Saab. So that says, so we'll, go, we'll continue so we see whether, whether it goes through everything else. Um, but we've got ECM missing on the engine control module. It doesn't see it's got an engine module on it. So we need to investigate that. Let's just see what else we've got. Um, that's just the anti-pinch on the windows isn't learnt. So we'll go through it to turn the steering to lock to get the codes out in a minute. There we go. Also, customer on this one has stated that he has problems getting gears as well, and it's an automatic. So let's have a look. Let's take the key out so we can have to have that bleep. Supply voltage, position sensor, um, invalid, output res per minute, input res per minute. That'll be because of engine ECU. Do, 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 do. And we've got lots of traction control, um, transmission control module faults as well in there. But the main thing to get it started, obviously it's got comms with the transmission control module because it's coming up with the fault codes. But I think what we'll do is we'll, like, we'll investigate why 
the engine control module isn't on the um, isn't on the bus. Something else you can do with Tet Two, if you come out of that, you see where it says bus. When you go through, you can do a response test. See that bottom one there? You can go in there, and this checks the CAN data that's travelling through. So we'll say yes. So if I went to the sim and the powertrain bus there, and you can see it's bleep, and you can see the speed that the data packet's travelling through. So it's a good bit of kit, this. If I go to engine ECM, nothing. That should be bleeping and showing the speed that the uh, packet data is moving. So we know it's as though it hasn't got an engine control module on it. So we can now find out why. We'll check lives and earth to the engine control module. Now I know on these, they're also in the front bumper on the driver's side in front of the wheel and they get wet through on the uh, connectors. So it could even be something as daft as that. It could have lost power and earth. So the main thing is check the powers, check the earth to the ECU and then we can... Uh, we can hopefully do a bit of head scratching on and get our head around it. So uh, let's have a look under the bonnet. Right, we've now had a look at which relay supplies the live to the engine control module. Now, check the fuse. There's the relay, that red one there. So what I'm going to do is take it out, which I've already done. And you'll see down inside there are four pins. A bit difficult this, one-handed. This is where I need an assistant. But there you go, I'll trap that under there. Hopefully, I think that might do for the benefit of just doing this. No, it won't. There you go. You can see it there. So I've got those four pins there. Now you've got 30 and 87. So if you see the test light lights when I go onto that pin. So we've got a live. What the relay does is takes the load off supplying a live from there down to the engine ECU, which was there. So that's the live to the engine ECU. Now I've checked this relay. If you look on this side as well, this is the low tension side. We've got a live to it. When the SIM unit recognises the key, what it does is it supplies an earth to this pin. And the problem I've got when I've got the key on, if I was to put the test light power lead onto the live supply and I go across here, I've got nothing. So when I turn the key on in the car, which I will go and do. So, key going in, ignition on, obviously it won't start, we know that. Back out, and we're going to go to this pin. Now, we've got the live here from the battery as the earth, sorry, the live here from the battery as the earth. So when I put the test light on here, there's no, it should light. So the fault we've got is pretty much, we're going to put a live across. What we'll do is we'll, we'll bridge this connector to this connector because we'll see then whether we get the engine ECU pinging on. If we can hear things start to, on these you'll hear things starting to wake up, throttle bodies and EGRs, etc. So I'll just bridge that out and we'll see how we go. Right, there we go. So I've got one connector here in... The connector that goes to the engine ECU and this is the live so when I put that live to there let's see whether we can hear the engine ECU burst into life and I hope you can hear that on the video you should be able to so there we go so we know the ECU is fine probably and that's running so we've got the, we now know, we've diagnosed that we have a problem on this earth here. So the thing is, we're going to get everything out of the way and we're going to check the wiring all the way round. It goes through, round from the gearbox. And if we get a light, it goes down there. And we've had some really dodgy wiring put through on this car. So we're going to go and have a look and chase the wire because I suspect we've got a broken wire somewhere between, there's the loom that goes down across and... If you see those two wires there, these two pieces of trunk in there, that goes down, and you see it going down the engine, it goes down onto the uh, driver's front wheel where the ECU is. So somewhere in between there and the SIM unit, which I'd suspect it's pretty much going to be in the engine bay, 
we've got an open circuit or high resistance on the wire. So um, let's see how we go. I'll be back when I've stripped it all out and we've had a quick look. Right, so on a closer look, this is looking like it's going to be an easy one. So this is the pin that feeds the earth to the relay, which is there. Just about to chase it, got the meter on it. Just about to chase it and thought, it's a bit green down there. Pull the shroud off. Look at those wires there. And my hands that look disgusting. But if you look at those wires, look how poor they are, corroded. And they just I just touched it and it fell apart. So I'm going to reconnect those wires and we're going to see whether our fault has gone away and the car runs. So, right, I'll do that and then uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so it quickly becomes apparent that we have adopted someone else's nightmare here. Um, see that wire down there? We have found a break in that as well. So, we now turn the ignition on and the relay here works and we've got connection. You can hear all the engine control module power up everything on the engine. The problem is the car doesn't start still, so we've got extra issues. So what I'm going to do is I'll reconnect Tech 2 clear all the fault codes, rescan it, and see what other issues we've got. So as we can see, the car does not start still. Transmission range switch, input incorrect, so it's not seeing it, probably in park. So what we'll do, we'll go into live data, just come out of that. So, if we come out of there, and we go up to transmission, We've got automatic transmission. Turn on the ignition. And you'll see it'll go through. Now, oh, read values, that's what we want. There's read values. Now, when we go through that, and we'll go. We've got selector position. So if I now chip, move the gear lever. So, so we've got, it sees the press brake, the selector position, and I'm moving the gear lever, and it's not seeing anything. So the transmission range performance switch is on top of the gearbox on one of these. Now, we'll get one, and we'll have a look, and we'll plug it in and see what we can do. Now on top of the gearbox, on the auto gearbox, you've got this control module. It's the, it's the transmission control module and it's also got this range performance sensor in. Now, if you look down there, you can see it fitting on top of the gearbox and that cable goes to the arm and that tells the ECU what gear it's in. So that is gonna have a problem inside. So I'm gonna plug in temporary this, not so it's coded to the car, but just so we, we can see whether that gear range performance sensor is the issue. It's just a quick way of verifying. So here we go. So there you go. This is the ECU, the second hand one I've got. We've plugged it in down there. We're just gonna leave it temporary. And then we're gonna go back in the car and we'll see whether that's the fault. If it is the fault, it'll start the car. So watch this. Okay, ignition on. And that's the fault fixed. But it's not fixed yet because that ECU has to be fitted on top of the gearbox and then programmed into the car. Otherwise it will not work. So, but at least we've got the car running, so we're getting there. Um, let's see how we go. Okay, the next stage, we've fitted the uh, transmission control module on the top of the gearbox and now we've put Tech 2 on and you add ECU. When you do it, it goes through a security check and it says disconnect tech two and um, connect tech two to a PC with an R232 cable. So um, we do that, we go on global tiers and we get security access. So let's turn that off now, disconnect it, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to obtain security access. So you've got your power lead in the bottom of your tech two there. At the bottom, can you see that going in? You've disconnected the candy and the multiplexer lead. This is the R232 cable that's going across and that's going into your laptop there. 
and this is security access. You've clicked on security access. Um, what I'll do is I'll just get it ready and I'll show you it flashing off the screen on the Tech 2 when it reads and writes the security access, access into the Tech 2. So here we are. There's the Tech 2 on Global Tiz. Click Next. As soon as I do that, it says Reading Request. Go over here, it'll flash the screen on and off and it'll flash across, or should do. Here we go. So there you go, it's come out with the VIN number of the vehicle. Once you've got the VIN number, click next and it will write handling the request. And as soon as it's done that, it will write a response to the tech two and you'll see it flash on on the screen. So there you go, handling request. Come on, it's not the fastest laptop in the world, this one. It's old technology, don't forget this. This is like arc age. So, come on. So what it does, it handles the request, then it writes the, the security patch to the Tech 2. There you go, write in response, see it flash across. There you go. And as soon as it's done that, the screen will come back. And that's it, and it says, Security access type one. So you're now ready to just add the modules. So you go into control modules, add and remove, click add, and just go through that. Yes, 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 GB, set tire size, and you're done. So there we go, let's try it. So there you go, you go through the list of ECUs, transmission control module, click that, you enter, put add, and you'll see it go through the um, preconditions. It gets security access, turn the key to on. And then once it's done that, it will add it. So there you go. Now it'll check the security access, which obviously it's got off, te off Global Tiz. And that's pretty much everything you need to do. There will be a significant amount of time for it before it does it because it's slow this stuff but at least there you go and you've added the control module now i've just got to go through all this stuff so bear with me i'll go through this and i'll be right back so there you go sorry i had to come off there just to put in it asked me to put in has it got xenon lights halogen lights um is it an esp or tcs car or esp plus i've entered those values into it and it just writes that to the bus configuration so it knows what it's dealing with um and then all it does is ask you to put it in neutral while it learns its range sensor performance because it's like a, a rather than it clicking in different positions that's like a re, like a resistor variable resistor so that's done um so let's see how this goes now foot on the brake and we have a flat battery but at least we know the car starts so we're done so this is fixed so um yep there you go so you need global tiz you need a tech two and uh, a lot of head scratching. So thank you for watching. And if you would subscribe, should I put a light on so you can see what's happening? There you go. And if you would subscribe, I would appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. See you soon.